It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and there's no love lost between these NFC North foes. It's the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions, and it's all up next. First open in 2002, there's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Today we've got what's always a hard-hitting battle in the NFC North as it'll be the Chicago Bears taking on the Detroit Lions. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, these Detroit Lions, they won over a lot of people with the way they played under Dan Campbell last year. They started 1-6, found their stride, won eight of their last 10 games, and nearly got into the playoffs. And when you think back to how they almost got in, that final Sunday night going to Lambeau Field and beating the Packers, that tells you about the culture that's already been established there. All you need now is to watch this team continue to play. They're going to contend, I believe, in this season. And then for the visiting Bears, they want to wipe the slate clean from 2022. Now, working in their favor, we've seen plenty of teams in the NFL make big turnarounds from year to year. What can the Bears do to you know, just get back closer to maybe seven, eight wins, Charles? Well, they want to coalesce all this young talent that they're accumulating and guys that they brought in from the outside and start to build a culture, a feeling around this team that they know they can compete week in and week out. Just about time to rock as Toe gets ready to meet Leather. And we are underway from Ford Field. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And the Lions offense getting ready to go to work here and under center. A man whose career has been rejuvenated a bit as of late. And season number eight now out of Cal, it's Jared Goff. Rumors of Goff demise? Greatly exaggerated, it seems. Boy, what a big year he had last year. 29 touchdowns. It led the Lions to their first winning season since 2017. Under his leadership, the Lions expect to make the playoffs for the first time in a few seasons. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's the former Bear. This is David Montgomery. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Here's Gaul. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 10 for the Lions and a first down. And as you're game planning as a staff, you go through all the different ways you can neutralize the other guys' pass rushers. Extra linemen, leave a tight end in, bring the running backs back in to block. Or you can do this, a little simple screen pass, and it works to perfection. On first down, it's gone. And that's to Amon Ross St. Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Goff's throw into the hands of Reynolds here. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. To the air again. Golf. He'll find his rookie tight end, Sam Laporta. And they will have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 27 yards there, first down. And they clearly wanted to come out, Charles, and be aggressive throwing the football, and they've been pretty efficient along with that aggressiveness. He's now 4-4 four four on this opening drive. Yeah, and that's led to a fresh set of downs. I like what he's doing back there. You can tell he's at ease, feels good about what he's doing. And I think if I'm the play caller, I'm reading that, I'm continuing to let him throw the football. From the red zone now, gone. 
to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Coming right, this is Montgomery on the toss. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Well, it's almost football 101 that you preach to your safeties. Don't let anyone get behind you. You're the last line of defense. But he didn't let the play come to him. He went to the play. How about that read and recognition and finishing off that one behind the line of scrimmage? Now that'll be caught by St. Brown. And they're going to get him down shy of the first at about the 13-yard line. That'll give him eight that time. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. I think we can safely say they came out to be aggressive on the opening series, Charles. They didn't run the ball once. All that passing, it does get them the three to nothing lead. I think what we saw there, partner, was the true definition of football balance, which means doing what you want to when you want to on offense. And in this case, it was throwing the football. They may mix in running the football a little bit more as this game goes on. But this opening drive, while it stalled out, it still gave them three points. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Tyler Scott now from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So here come the Bears to take over on offense behind their third-year quarterback, former Ohio State Buckeye Charles, Justin Fields. We all knew Fields was an incredible athlete coming out of college. And last season, he unleashed it upon the NFL. Ran for over 1,100 yards and would have broken the quarterback's single-season record if he had played the full season. He also threw 17 touchdown passes, and that's the next jump for him. More consistency as a passer. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 24. They run with a fourth-round pick, Roshan Johnson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Here's Johnson again on second down. He'll get a yard. That's all as they get him down at the 28. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal game. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Third down and six. Here's Fields. And a throw there complete how about that red man coverage and decided to test him early but it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion the fourth down so they send out Trenton Gill back deep Khalif Raymond this is fielded at the 27 43 yards on the punt Seven-yard return, and the Lions will take over. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Play fake, and it's gone. That one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. 
I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Out of the gun, Goff. That's caught by Montgomery. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 11 yards there and a Lion first down. But oh, whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's the result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands. And oftentimes, the receiver turns around, and there's the ball. Nice completion there. And a good pick up there. He gets about six up to midfield. It's not a huge breakaway of run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Second down and four. Play action. It's golf. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. From the 50, it's gone. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man to play. And he is going to have a Lions first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I will hear about that from him soon. Goff connects with St. Brown. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And it'll be a minimum pickup here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. Second quarter action now from Detroit, and it's the homestanding Lions who have the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Gibbs will try and pick it up. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. And that's why you spend a first-round draft pick on a running back, not for just the fancy runs, but these dirty, gritty third-and-ones, third-and-twos. That's why you draft him. Off play action. Here's Goff. He's got right on the short throw. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Out of the gun, they'll give to Gibbs. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. A solid pickup at 13 sets him up first and goal. He really didn't have any doubt that he was going to be one of the top-rated rookies coming into the league, especially as a runner. And he's given us no reason to change our minds. That's a big-time run, and the production that he showed us in college is translating very well into the National Football League. They'll run with Gibbs. And they'll get this from the 8 to the 5. Pick up a 3. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there. But that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. And the ball smack dab on the 5-yard line. Here's 2nd and goal. They'll try the middle with Montgomery. 
And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So they opted to pass for it on third and goal. Let's see what they do on fourth and goal. Well, I think they threw it with the idea that if they didn't get it, they would go for it on fourth and goal. So they've got another play in their pocket. They're going to have to call it right now. No field goal here. On fourth down, gone. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. They throw for it on fourth and goal at the one. And the Chicago defense able to come up with a goal line stand. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in, and if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high because mentally you're saying, hey, hey, you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. They run with a former Panther. It's Deontay Foreman, and he'll get him a little space here up to the five-yard line. On the defensive end, Cameron Sutton with a tackle. And give him a lot of credit there, but even more credit to the guys up front. In that situation, you know it's going to be a stacked defensive front. And to be able to gain that much yardage, that's a big win for the guys on offense. Yeah, they were just about standing on their own goal line, so to get a few yards there, a great start. Now we'll see what second down breaks. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. Fields on first down. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that you can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. And a short pickup there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion and a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend down third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Ran it last time. Now fields to throw. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Flying in for that sack, Aiden Hutchinson. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. He'll take it a few steps in front of the 50. Seven yards on the return after a punt of 39. And the Lions will have excellent field position here as they take over first and 10. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And they've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. He'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. 
from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Here's Goff. And he finds Montgomery complete. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here's a second and eight. Now Goff. This will be caught inside the 10. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions, and the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it, for them to get downfield that quickly? And now first and goal, expect them attack right here on this play. Golf. And he's got his man. It's caught for a lion touchdown. Josh Reynolds from four yards out. And the Lions will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And the lead grows to 10-0. now as they line up and kick this one away. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. Well, the Bears going to take over now late in this first half. They're certainly in need of some kind of points here before the end of the half. A field goal or something being shut out right now. They could really use some momentum before they head into halftime. Now a first down throw, Fields. Dumping it off for Johnson. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back, on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. To throw is Fields. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. A first and 10 here. And you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Meanwhile, Fields throw here into the hands of Moore. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. A good position to be in here, second and inches. Again, Fields. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Fields to Komet there for a Chicago first. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now it's Fields. 
throw is going to be incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So line of scrimmage still at 39 on second and ten. Back to throw, Fields. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Here's Fields. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this ball recovered by the offense. But remember, they cannot advance it here in the final two minutes of the half. So this will be blown dead, and it'll come back to the spot of the fumble. So we've reached halftime here in Detroit with the Lions out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, the Lions coach, got a very strong you. performance out of their quarterback, back Jared Goff. Quarter number three. He's got a touchdown pass on the ledger as his guys were able to build a double-digit lead. Ten nothing is our score as we get started again on EA Sports. On the return, here's Tyler Scott, and he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the twenty. And the Bears' offense set to go to begin the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and a yard. One play action. Fields. He's got the connection to Moore. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Second and short. That's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the 50, here's Fields. And he'll go right back to Moore, complete again. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. From the 32-yard line now, here's second and five. Fields. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. 
Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. A first down carry here for Johnson. Oh, fine work there as he gets this thing down to the 11-yard line. 14 yards in a Chicago first down. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it. And the running game is starting to pay off. Justin Fields taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Bears have cut it back within a score. And talk about built to run the football, whether you're calling it on design running plays or him breaking out into the open field after trying to pass the football. Justin Fields knows where the end zone is. Eight rushing touchdowns last season. Only Jalen Hurts had more. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that'll cut it to three at 10 7. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at the 31-yard line. St. Brown in motion right. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. From the 33, here's second down and eight. Toss left to Montgomery. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a gain of 10 for the Lions and a first down. A nice toss play there to the left. More than enough room to move the chains. And you know what I love about that play as a broadcaster? Seeing the big guys move. Seeing them get upfield and take out defenders. You know what I hated as a defensive back? What? That exact same <laughs> thing. Seeing those linemen coming downfield, getting ready to blot out the sun. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. On second down, Montgomery. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Throwing on third, Goff. He gets this out wide to Gibbs, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. 
They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And here now the punter Fox as he sends this one away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. The Chicago offense set to get started. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Fields tapping it forward, jet sweep. And not much room there, so get it up only to about the 21. That's a nice job there defensively, being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on it before he could get much out of it. Second and nine now from the 21. Up the middle, Johnson. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Fields now to throw. And got his man complete. And he's out of bounds, but not before a big pickup that time on what's going to wind up being the final play of the third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. This is Homer. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Now Fields. Got St. Brown running the quick slant here. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Off play action. Fields. They'll roll him out right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble, hit second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. On second down, Johnson. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the gun, here's Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. And the Bears are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown, and that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. They'll try and run. This is Johnson, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. To Johnson again. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. 
His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. For the lead, here's third and goal. Here's Fields. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. So a big one coming now for Cairo Santos. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Santos' kick is up and through. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Goff in this Lions offense set for a first and 10 at their own 22. They'll start things off with a give to Gibbs. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. And hold on here because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside. Two yards to go, second down. Back to the ground, this time Montgomery. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity, usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Second and seven. They'll try the air now with Goff. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. A big play here. Third and two. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. Goff now to throw. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. They'll come up now on second down. Now Montgomery, he's got it on the draw. 
he's able to get this one down to the 40 yard line. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You've still got time to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Now it's gone. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just a shade under a minute to go in the game. Here's second down and three. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Here now, third down. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now, what's the thinking here? Because a touchdown would be nice, but you've ensured yourself a chance at three in the lead. So how worried are you about the six? You're not very worried about if you're confident in your kicker. And if you got a kicker who can put it through the post, you feel really good about trying to bleed that clock down. In an ideal scenario, your kicker puts it through the post as the clock hits zeros. Every eye in the stadium locked in on Riley Patterson. This to almost certainly win the football game. And his kick is good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So there was a little meat on that ball, a little more than a chip shot considering the circumstances, but he's able to bang it home in what should be the game winner. And the key was getting him into a good position to kick from. I mean, if that's a 52-yarder, you're going to have some anxious moments, but kickers nowadays, you give them anything under 40, and they're automatic. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. This is first and 10. And one last throw here for Fields. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner. Although on that last play, they were so backed up, it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn.
And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Lions as we say so long from Ford Field.